In 2011, Jean Liu's career at Goldman Sachs brought her back to her hometown of Beijing. But it wasn't easy getting around the city. When I first moved back to Beijing, you know, I always find myself struggling in the middle of the street with my three young children. I didn't have a license plate. To drive in Beijing, you need to have your license plate. And it's hard to get, it's a lottery system. So, and it's really hard to hail a taxi. If you need a cab today, there's a good chance you'll use Didi Chuxian, the defining ride-hailing app in China. But it wasn't always the market leader in the country. In the 2010s, Didi was in fierce competition with both domestic rivals and Uber. This is where Jean Liu enters the picture. It was around 2013 when Liu met Didi's founder and CEO, Cheng Wei. She had been trying to make an investment in Didi on behalf of Goldman Sachs, but was rejected several times. In her interview with David Rubinstein, Liu recalled that she said to Cheng Wei, If you don't let me invest in you, let me join you. What followed was a road trip with Cheng Wei and other senior DD executives to Tibet for some soul searching. Liu was still an executive at Goldman Sachs, and her friends and family advised her against working for DD, but she signed on as chief operating officer in 2014. At that time, DD was valued at $500 million and had around 700 employees. Their only service was taxi hailing. In Liu's first few years at DD, the first big challenge was keeping domestic rival Kwai Di at bay. The two rivals engaged in a cash-burning war to gain drivers and customers, with Kwai Di backed by Alibaba and DD backed by Tencent. While this was all going on, Uber had entered China as well. To take on the looming threat of Uber, a merger between DD and Kwai Di took place in 2015. The deal was brokered by Liu, thanks to her close ties with both Tencent and Alibaba. The new entity spawned from Didi and Kwai Di would eventually be known as Didi Chuxing. That year, Liu was promoted to president of Didi, a position she holds to this day. She would also encounter a health scare, having detected breast cancer in its early stages. While undergoing treatment, Liu continued to work from home, went into remission, and returned to the office in 2016. Having battled breast cancer and survived, Liu's next challenge was to take on Uber. On the other side of the battle was Jin Liu's cousin, Liu Zhen, who served as head of Uber's China strategy. The competition was fierce, and both sides burned through cash to offer subsidies and gain market share. A critical turning point in the battle against Uber was when Apple invested $1 billion in DD, again made possible by Liu. We're very, very proud to have done that. When Tim Cook visited Beijing's Apple store in the Wangfujing district, he used Didi's services and was accompanied by none other than Liu. Didi would then emerge as the unanimous frontrunner by acquiring Uber China in a deal valued at around $7 billion. Yet problems festered in some corners of the company. In 2018, several women were attacked and killed by their drivers while using Didi's hitch carpooling service. In an interview with tech media Huxiu.com, Liu said these passenger deaths hit her harder than cancer. <laughs> Afterwards, DT implemented new safety features, including audio and video recordings during rides, as well as AI-powered order distribution to prioritize pairing women passengers with women drivers at night. DT also formulated ways to identify abnormal behaviors like route deviations or excessively long idling in one location. While at DD, Jin Liu founded the DD Women's Network to help women at the company advance their careers. About 40% of Didi's employees are women, 37% of them are in tech roles. At the moment, there are fewer women than men who are successful business leaders. But Liu insists that in China, women face fewer obstacles in tech companies compared to anywhere else. I think I'm most proud that we are providing 10 billion trips a year and serving all different types of need. And we are creating income for more than tens of millions of drivers. During her time at DD, the company received investments from the likes of SoftBank, Alibaba, Tencent, Apple, Foxconn, and Baidu. And the firm is reportedly considering an IPO as early as Q2 of 2021, according to a Bloomberg report that cites people familiar with the plans. They've gone from being a local taxi hailing platform to a multinational mobility unicorn with a variety of products valued at over $60 billion. According to Zhu Xiaohu from GSV Ventures, one of Didi's earliest investors, Liu is considered one of the most accomplished female figures in China's biz and tech world, and is one of the few female leaders of a major tech company. 
In the internet era, the key to a successful business is understanding the customer's expectations, and half of our customers are women. 